The whole process of translating slash localizing a game is something I find way more interesting than I have any right to. The average person's perception of the localization process is this binary one. Either 100% accurate, or it's being a pure evil that devoted itself to truly heinous goals like inserting memes and toning down the pedophilia. But surprise surprise, there's a lot of things making it more complicated than that. Sometimes it's the original language. The Japanese version of Live Lives pre history era ended with a pun involving the word for love that doesn't quite work in English, creating a difficult situation for both the Aeon Genesis fan translation and the remake's official translation. Other times it's cultural stuff. The Japanese version of Crash 2 had to change the seemingly innocuous animation because of an accidental resemblance to an active serial killer's method of killing. And sometimes the very lines of code making up the game can just personally tell translators to fuck off. Fire Emblem Gaiden had so little available space that the fan translation had to use various tricks to reduce the total amount of text. A 100% accurate game translation is like a video on this channel with good audio quality. It doesn't exist. Earthbound is an example of a game where the original creator approved literally every line of dialogue, and guess what? Some stuff still changed. On the topic of Earthbound, Apple Kid is a fraud leeching off the success of the more honest working Orange Kid. Oh, and also SNES RPGs like Earthbound are especially challenging games to translate. Not only does the process involve going for larger scripts for less returns, but these games focus on the narrative means having more adult ideas in an era where games were seen as just toys for children. And when it comes to the SNES RPG localization with the most complications, there's a very strong contender for the crown that reveals itself as a war criminal turtle and attacks you. Also, I should just say that the only two languages I speak are English and high school level Italian, which I somehow won an award for. Since neither of those languages are Japanese, I'm going to be relying on Clyde Mandolin's Legends of Localization website and this 2018 article in particular as a major source for this video. You might know them for their work on the Mother 3 fan translation, but they've done so much more than that and I'd recommend checking out their blog for insight on the process of localization. But anyways, all three of the SNES Final Fantasies had their fair share of complications in the localization process. FF6 has the typical debates you'd expect from any RPG localized by Wolsey. FF5, on the other hand, originally didn't make it to America because it wasn't seen as accessible to the average gamer, an extremely funny reason in retrospect now that the average AAA systems blow blows it out of the water. And then when the PS single version was brought here, its translation was heavily disliked for a variety of reasons. And then when another version for the GBA made it here too, its translation was heavily disliked for a variety of reasons. And then when the Pixel Remaster version with FF4 on the other hand differs from the other two SNES Final Fantasies in an important regard. Before it even got an English release, there were two Japanese versions, the original one and the Easy Type version. The latter was intended for younger audiences and makes various changes with that demographic in mind. Simplifying the script, censoring some parts, buffing various player tools, removing most of the party members' unique commands, changing map layouts, and also making the final boss significantly harder for some reason. Now, the Easy Type's relation to the English version isn't exactly clear, even if Easy Type came first. Some sources say the former was based on the latter, and others say the opposite. Either way, these two versions make similar modifications to the original, although they're not one-to-one. -one. The English version, known as Final Fantasy II because the actual 2 and 3 weren't translated yet, yeah, doesn't have the Easy Type version of the final boss, but also removed the option to turn on ATB for seemingly no reason. In addition, due to differences in the English and Japanese languages, the English script had to be significantly trimmed down in order to fit in text boxes. Just to be clear, the thought process behind these changes was understandable, and I'm not trying to point fingers at any individual person. Audiences overseas weren't quite familiar with RPGs yet, so making the game easier just seemed like the safer bet. And that's before getting into other factors, like Nintendo of America's strict policies on certain content and the aforementioned issues with text boxes. However, a significant portion of the English version's changes are to the game's detriment. While this is very much a hindsight is 2020 type deal, I would argue that removing most party members' unique commands runs contrary to the goal of making the game appealing to those who aren't as well versed in RPGs. In my experience, a major contributing factor to a lot of people's aversion to RPG gameplay comes from anxiety over managing resources and MP in particular. I'm just saying there's a reason that the RPG series that became a worldwide phenomenon years later also happened to be the one that streamlines MP among other things. A lot of the removed commands incur zero MP costs and would have inspired newcomers to use options they otherwise wouldn't have. To put this in terms my fellow Americans can better understand, imagine you can get burgers for free. You'd be more likely to eat those burgers because of that fact. 
You might even try some other places as paid burgers too, both because you're now more familiar with what burgers are like and because you save money on those free burgers. And the script certainly isn't helping matters as there's plenty of errors and otherwise questionable choices to be found. To give you some of the highlights, dialogue generally has less emotion behind it as exemplified by this scene where a dying soldier's desperation to reach the castle's healing pot is toned down. There's a pretty unprofessional mistake where an NPC accidentally refers to the original name of a location that was supposed to be censored. Barbarisha is renamed Valvolus, completely misunderstanding how the Four Fiends' names were supposed to be references to demons from the Divine Comedy. There are several monk characters who sound like they're sneezing due to the translators not thinking about how a martial artist battle cry of Acho would come across without context. At one point, Tella is mistakenly referred to as Edward's father, which is like the worst possible thing to refer to him as. However, there is one change in the SNES version that's generally liked, the Spoonie Bard line in the scene where Tella beats Edward to death. While the smaller script usually erases a lot of emotion behind scenes, this is a rare case where the dialogue changes arguably improve the scene. The original exchange has Edward telling Tella that it's not what you think, with Tella's response being to angrily ask him just how it is and what he thinks. In the English version, the former line is changed to please listen, to which Tella responds with his now iconic insult. Changing this response into something that does not engage with anything Edward is trying to say, and specifically choosing an antiquated insult really does aid in conveying the sentiment of Tella not listening to reason. Despite its absence from the original Japanese script, this line would go on to be featured in basically any retranslation of FF4, official or otherwise, and referenced in various other Final Fantasies, or even games in general. Square even had to go out of their way to specify that the line would be featured in the Pixel Remaster script because it's just that beloved. Overall though, I think Mandolin put it best when they said that while the SNES translation has many flaws, it's also what you'd expect from an RPG translation released around that time. There's this mentality among YouTubers that any issue with a game, movie, etc. was actually caused by some moral failing, usually laziness, of the people working on it, and I think it's important to do what I can to correct that narrative. It should be abundantly clear that the SNES translation's issues came from broader factors rather than one guy sleeping on the job, be it rules put in place by Nintendo of America, technical limitations, etc. etc. Though, this isn't exactly the end of the story. Final Fantasy games, and especially the sprite-based ones, get a ton of re-releases, and 4 is no exception. As stated by Mandolin, FF4 gets a new English release every 3-4 to four years. Since the SNES translation leaves a lot to be desired, it's only natural that these versions would make various changes, for better or for worse. The first of these is the PS Single version, which came as a bundle of some obscure game no one likes. In many ways, this version is an improvement. It's no longer subject to the SNES version's text box issues, resulting in more accurate and more naturally flowing dialogue. Additionally, due to changes in the gaming landscape since the SNES version's release, a lot of censorship has been undone, although some censored lines, like this one, which was obviously supposed to be about drinking, still remain. And last, but certainly not least, the gameplay stays close to the original version rather than the easy type. However, the PS Single version isn't exactly perfect. There's plenty of small translation errors like this case where Will should have been stone or how the dwarf's lally ho catchphrase is a classic case of mixing up L's and R's due to both being counted as the same letter in Japanese. But the more pressing matter is how the script can be really cynical in a way that doesn't mesh well with the original work. Kane is given snarkier lines that are inconsistent with his actual personality, a scene is changed to have the game's director yell at the characters, and I can't even begin to articulate what's going on with the Chocobo storage. It's just weird to see this as an officially licensed version of the game rather than some fan-made thing. Next is the GBA version, which started life as a copy-paste of the PS single script and retains most of that version's strengths and weaknesses. Better flowing dialogue, going back on the SNES translation's gameplay changes, and weird inconsistencies in which censorship is revoked. It does change the weirdly cynical aspects of the PS single script though, making it a noticeable improvement. Still, this version has its own quirks, be it this genuine mistake where the wrong character tag was used, and more frequently, the use of internet slang. Notable examples include this reference to the real Ultimate Power website, and this goons one, where depending on how old, endless, or knowledgeable, and weirdly specific internet lore you are, you either get that it's a something awful reference, or think it's something else entirely. Also, there's a pretty small and inconsequential detail of how the fuck is this font size visible on a GB a screen. This 3D version, originally released for the DS, is what Clyde Mandolin recommends as the most accurate translation. Rather than being based on a pre-existing script, this one was done from the ground up. As such, it doesn't carry over any of the previous three translations' many, many issues. Prose makes use of advanced vocabulary befitting of a medieval setting, and while some people might not like that subject, it undeniably gives the game a unique flavor. There is a non-zero amount of pop culture references added in, but by now that would be like saying there's some microplastics in someone's body. This version would later be ported to PC and mobile devices, and the translation is mostly the same there, aside from some spelling errors and an ugly font. The last two official versions, the 2011 PSP version and the 2021 Pixel Remaster, 
Master version are both pretty close to the DBA version with some slight changes. The former updates some terminology, slightly changes some things to tie into the after years, and has new issues with its font, but for the most part, it's not worth scrutinizing every last detail. The Pixel Remaster is its own can of worms, but aside from similar updates and terminology, and yet another terrible choice of font, there's not much worth talking about in regards to translation specifically. So that's everything covered. As far as official translations go, due to the three games in the series that spent a long period of time without a western release as well as changes made to the games that actually made it overseas, Final Fantasy has quite a history of fan translation efforts. In fact, the 1998 fan translation for FF5 is arguably the most influential one for any game and considered by many to be better than the official translation efforts of later versions. FF4 Nominally Edition is the most recent of these fan translations. It's based on the script of the Project 2 ROM hack and aims to keep that hack's new translation without the gameplay changes albeit with some corrections. While not 100% perfect, Nomming Way is the way to go if you want the original aesthetics and also the way I played the game a couple months ago. FF4 being some sort of weird transitional point between the NES and SNES eras of the series is a big part of its identity for me. So being able to play the SNES version without the issues of the official translation is really nice. Or you know, you can have a SNES version that's somehow even worse. Look, I don't want this to come off as overly mean-spirited to the work of a small team of hobbyists, but the J2E slash 10th anniversary fan translation is genuinely the worst translation discussed in this video. Released in 2001, it aimed to be and was seen as a more faithful translation than the SNES and PS single versions. However, it has basically any issue you could have with the previously discussed official translations and even throw some new ones into the mix. To start, if you thought any of the other versions' pop culture references were bad, you haven't seen anything yet. Say what you want about those ones, but at least they would semi-make sense for the characters to say if the context of them being references was removed. Meanwhile, J2E has Sid using the Pulp Fiction Medieval on Your Ass quote in a setting where everyone was going medieval on your ass to begin with and below him acknowledging the existence of William Shatner. There's also a lot of significant changes to characterization that feel like something out of an abridged series. Part of me secretly likes this translation's take on Edge as this pathetic loser, which isn't as egregious to me as certain other changes because the juxtaposition between angsty ninja prince and idiot skirt chaser is already a major aspect of his character. Rydia, on the other hand, is written to be more hostile towards Edge, although let's be honest, he deserves it. The character who got it the worst though is Gold Edge, whose villainous dialogue is now overridden to an extent that comes off as corny. The game also has a common issue of fan translations exerting unnecessary swearing. Fuck you, Sasuke! Ore and fucking sick! of your fucking attitude. While that would be tolerable on its own, it ties into another issue of a fair bit of uncomfortable edgy humor coming to that era of the internet. In particular, there's Kane calling Rose a whore and a weird sex joke involving the five-year-old Pallone. But the big smoking gun often used in the case against the J2E translation is the fact that it didn't really do that much translation to begin with. In addition to a lot of lines from the SNES translation just getting straight up reused, comparisons of the supposedly retranslated lines reveal that a significant portion of them are closer to the SNES version than the Japanese text. This means that for a significant portion portion of the script, the J2E translators took a SNES translated line, changed it just slightly enough to seem like a new line, and passed it off as an actual translation. To quote Mandolin, if this had been a project for a translation class, it would have received a failing grade for the problems it added in itself, and then reported for plagiarism. There is a lot of other issues with the J2E translation that I don't have time to go over, like the various typos, or the way it mixed up the Japanese words for magnetism and gravity in the Lodestone Cavern section. But it had the original Japanese gameplay, and it went back on a lot of the SNES version censorship. Even even though it still managed to fumble even that from time to time. So to an unassuming observer, this was a far better translation than the SNES one or the PS single one, when that couldn't be further from the truth. The takeaway from this should be that fan translations aren't as exempt from criticism as many would like to believe. Surprise surprise, people who don't have a formal background in translations aren't always going to produce the best ones. This isn't to say that there aren't fan translations that can rival official efforts, seeing as how I've mentioned at least three of those in this video. Rather, the idea of there being a quote unquote objectively accurate translation is a foolish one and it's not a good idea to hail fan translations as some sort of bastion against the issues with official ones, be it legitimate or not. Also, obligatory mention of how it's not exactly a coincidence that many of the anti-localization crowd seem to have reactionary politics. And as my last word on this version specifically, I just want to make it clear that I don't have anything against any member of the J2E team. Just like the SNES translation, the issues with J2E were the result of the conditions it was formed in, a team of hobbyists on a primitive version of the internet in this case. So in conclusion, I was originally going to give a whole spiel about how the various translations of Final Fantasy IV kind of make it like the old legends the fantasy genre takes inspiration from. But then I realize that's corny as fuck. My new conclusion is that the true meaning of Final Fantasy IV is William Shatner references, and the more William Shatner references the game has, the more Final Fantasy IV it is. 